Motu has a system set up called Bundles that acts as kind of a middleman between the digital performer software and your audio hardware. Now, there are different types of bundles. There are inputs, outputs, buses, instrument outputs, and mini device bundles. Let's start with audio bundles. They basically group together a set of ins and outs or buses, and it lets you treat them as a group, as a single entity. Now, what are bundles good for? They're good for switching between various audio interfaces. So let's say I'm on my Motu here and I'm using my multiple inputs for different things and I need to boot up on another system with just two ins and outs. I can quickly reassign them and then not lose my mapping that I have for my eight in and out interface. And they're great for cleaning up the assignment menus. For example, if you're not using all the I.O., like on my Motu, I'm not using the light pipe ins and outs, so I don't necessarily need or want to look at them or see them within Performer. So let's open up the bundles window. We can use the shortcut Shift-U or go under the studio menu on top and use this over here to get to it. So here are different tabs, inputs, outputs, buses, instruments, and MIDI devices. Let's start with inputs. Now I have two here by default, and I'm going to go add, or I can go add multiple, but let's add them one at a time. And I'll just expand the box here. And now I'm getting into SPDIF, so I don't necessarily want that one, so let me delete that one. So these are the ones that I'm going to use. Now I can also create these anywhere within Performer where I get to inputs and outputs. Like for example, here's an audio track. So I can go on the input field here. Here are all my bundles I just created, or I can create a new mono bundle. This is a mono track, so I can create, let's say if I needed a bundle for my light pipe inputs or outputs, I could create it from here. And these are the ones I just created. So let's go back to our bundles window over here and we'll do it like that. Now I can name them. So let's say I'm not going to use these two, so I don't think I need those. Let's delete that. And what I'm going to do is name these. So I'm going to name this one. I can double click it. I'm going to name that overhead left because I'm using these for miking up a drum kit. And I can click return or enter to dismiss it. And the other thing I can do is option single click. Let's call this one overhead right. So those are standard conventions within Performer. Option click to rename something or double click. This will be kick, snare, hi-hat. And that's all I'm using for now. And here's how they correspond to the physical inputs on my interface. And I can reassign these by just clicking in these cells. So for example, now the kick is reassigned to the mic instrument input. So very simple to do, and I can use this little mini menu, and this is also another convention throughout Performer, these mini menus at the upper right of Windows. I can use that to import bundles or to export bundles, so great for defining your audio interfaces, or I can clear and import at the same time. We determine the format here. These are all mono inputs, that's the way I want to leave it for now, but let's look at the outputs. And here I have one default output pair, and that's configured as stereo, and that's what I want. I'm just using the one output, so I don't need to configure any more. And that's corresponding to my main output, one and two. So that's fine. Buses we'll work with as we go along, but we can add them here and assign names and which bus pathway they're assigned to. And instruments, this is for multiple output software instruments. We can assign the multiple outputs here, and we'll look at those as we work through the videos. And MIDI devices. This is how we communicate with the external MIDI devices in your setup. And you can see the ones I have on my system across the top here. I have an MT4 MIDI interface with four ports. I have my Motu 828 Mark II, and that MIDI port is represented there. And I have a Novation Impulse keyboard, and these are the ports there. So I'm using my Impulse as my MIDI in for my controller, and I'm not using any external MIDI devices, so I don't really need to do anything else here, but let's look at how it works. Let's say I add a new device, and by the way, this corresponds with the audio MIDI setup in Mac OS X, so creating and editing devices here will update the Mac audio MIDI setup and vice versa. So here's a new device. I'll create another one, let's say just for illustrative purposes, and I can assign the ins and outs. So let's say I want this one to receive signal from port 1 on the Motu, and I want the output also on port 1. You do it like that, and I can get rid of them like that. And I can further define these devices by hitting the edit button. So let me press that and I'll go edit. And we have MIDI device properties that we can define. So let's say, for example, I'm using a Roland device with a lot of expansion boards. So I'll go down to the bottom and choose Roland. 
and they've got all the names mapped in here. So I'll choose, let's say, a nice modern module. I don't really have this hooked up, but just to show you, let's say I have a, an XV5080. So now it's displaying it, and I can, of course, name it here something different if I want to, but it's naming it that by default. But I can enable or disable whichever MIDI channels I want to have it transmit on and receive on, and I can just swipe across here, so that's nice and convenient. This is also a convention in Performer. You can swipe across when there's rows of buttons for mutes and solos and record enables and that kind of thing. So let's say I'm going to transmit only on one, and let's say I wanted it only to receive on the first eight, for example. That's how I would set it up. And I can further choose which type of MIDI messages I may want to exclude or include for transmitting or receiving. So let's say I don't want to transmit MIDI clock or I don't want to receive MIDI clock. You selectively enable these types of messages here. And in case you're using a device with multiple ports, you can assign the multiple ports here. And this is where it gets really interesting. I can assign patch names. Now, for example, in the 5080, there's a bunch of preset patches and some that are user. So let's say I've got an expansion card loaded in on, I don't know, let's say here, the user group over here, user bank of sounds. I can click hold here and choose which one. Let's say I've got the expansion country rhythm kits in. So now I'll be able to get all the names. It's going to override the default names and it's going to give me the names that are on that expansion card. So this is how you can get all the patch names in. So if I close this up, you'll see here, I'll close this also for a moment, and you'll see that on a MIDI track, these output assignments will appear in the output field. So I can route this MIDI to any of these eight channels that we set up. And there's our external device too, which we didn't configure. And they're italicized because, of course, my system isn't really seeing them. They're just sort of phantom. They don't really exist. Finally, I want to show you one other thing. In the setup menu over here, we have what's called inter-application MIDI. Now, sometimes when you're using other applications, you need to publish MIDI inputs and outputs either to or from Digital Performer. So, for example, let's say I added a virtual output here. Now I can route this out a virtual output, and it'll appear, let's say, at a rewire application, for example, or another application that receives MIDI. So it's for inter-application communication. Let's click that and delete it. And also, if we want to use the QuickTime synth that ships with Apple, we can click it here, Software Synthesizer, and it'll appear as a destination for MIDI tracks within Digital Performer. I'm not going to use it for these videos, but there is a built-in synth within the Mac OS, and we can get to it from there, and that's just a quality for how much CPU resources you want dedicated to it. So that's a little overview of bundles and your basic MIDI and audio hardware setup. See you for more in the next video.